I've got a two pound USDA choice flat iron steak, and I'm gonna be making that today, actually tomorrow, on the Weber kettle. I'll explain in just a minute. So yes, I've got a two pound USDA choice flat iron steak that we'll get to in a minute. But the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get a marinade ready because this is going to marinate overnight. I want a good 12 hours of marinade on this to really soak in some flavors. So let's get started on that. It's a very simple marinade. I've got two tablespoons of minced garlic. You could use a couple, three cloves of crushed garlic if you want to. I've got a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, a quarter cup of olive oil, a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, and a teaspoon each of salt and black pepper. And I'm just gonna mix this up. It's almost like a little bit of a oily vinaigrette. And that olive oil is really gonna help the flavor with this meat. That's good, let's move on to this flat iron steak. All right, so here is our flat iron steak. You see we've got some nice marbling in it. What I wanna do right now is I'm actually gonna cut this in half. That's gonna make it easier for me to marinate it and I'm gonna actually cook it in two pieces tomorrow. So right here down the center, we're just gonna cut. We've got our two halves, and we're ready to get the marinade on this. So the flat iron steak is in my Pyrex dish. I'm just gonna pour the marinade over it and we're gonna work it in. I'm gonna get this on both sides. And of course, splash a little outside if you want to. another one of my superpowers, that and staining t-shirts. And that's all there is to it. This now is going to go in the refrigerator overnight, and in about 12 hours, we're going to cook up some steaks. All right, it has been about 18 hours that we've been marinating this flat iron steak. You can see the oil that's in that marinade is sort of solidified. So what I need to do now is I need to get this out of here and sort of wipe off the excess so we can get it out to the Weber kettle and grill it up. So I'm just gonna take these pieces out of here and gently move the excess garlic and things like that off of there. While I'm doing this, I wanna give a big thank you to the people at Coda Aprons. If you see this apron I'm wearing, they sent it to me a couple weeks ago and asked me to try it out. And I said, all right, I'll give it a shot, but if I don't like it, I'm just gonna send it back. I'm not gonna like use it in videos or anything. I really like this apron. It has a lot of features that help me when I'm cooking and making videos. The biggest one is it has a cross back strap. So it doesn't have a strap that just goes right around your neck and sort of hangs there. And if you do a lot of cooking and spending a lot of time in the kitchen outside the barbecue and you wear an apron a lot of the times, you'll come to understand why that sort of cross strap is very helpful. Other aprons have them. It's not that theirs is unique in that respect, but Honestly, in combination with a lot of the other features this apron has, I really, really like it. It's long. This one goes down to my knees, basically. You can get them in other sizes. It's made of like a heavy, almost canvas cotton that's made in the USA. It's got leather trim, as you can see, but it's still machine washable, even with the leather trim. They say you can machine wash and tumble it dry. You don't have to dry clean it or use bleach or anything. Again, Coda, thank you for sending this to me. I'm gonna put a link down to their company in the description. If you wanna check out their aprons, please do. I don't get anything if you go buy something from them. I got a free apron out of it, I'm full disclosure, but I don't get like a cut of any sale or anything to make. I just really like this apron they sent me. So again, thank you very much. All right, this is looking good. Want a little bit of that garlic still on there. Not everything though. All right, this flat iron steak that we've cut in half is ready for the Weber kettle. Let's head out there. All right, I have some screaming hot coals in the vortex right now, and you'll notice that there's a cast iron pan sitting next to them. That's just been preheating. I'm gonna set it off to the side now. It's gonna come back when we cook up some mushrooms at the end of this to go on this flat iron steak. Now these steaks will probably not take long, maybe four or five minutes each side. We're gonna cook these to probably around 135, 140 degrees. Wanna to try to not overcook them. I don't know if you can tell, but we're night grilling. I have artificial light going out here. 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and give these a turn. Nice char on those. This one over here is in a little bit hotter part of the fire. It's all right. And give these another turn and I'm gonna have them switch places. Man, those look good. <laughs> Now I'm gonna move these indirect and get the lid on the Weber kettle for probably about five to 10 minutes. All right, let's give a check to these, see how they're doing. I'm gonna do a quick check with the instant read here. This steak's a little thinner than this one. This is the fatter end of the steak that we cut in half. So this one is reading about 120 or so. Let's check this one. This one's reading about 114. So this one's ahead, which is makes sense, it's thinner. So I wanna watch this, I wanna pull this before this one. So I'm gonna go about probably seven to 10 more minutes and that one will probably be ready by that time. All right, that's been about seven minutes, maybe just a little bit more. I wanna check that temperature and if it's close on the smaller piece, I'm gonna take it off and wrap it in foil. Let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, we are at 127 and rising, if you can see that upside down. So I'm gonna take this piece off and wrap it, and it'll carry over and get us to 135. Let me give this one a quick check. This one is sitting a little closer to the vortex. You know, it's at 120, 127. I'm gonna say three more minutes. All right, let's check it again. Night grilling, everything looks different at night under the lights. Yeah, we're 128 and rising here, if you can see that upside down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this, wrap it like the other one, get it inside, and I'm gonna do our mushroom sauce. Okay, started melting butter in that preheated pan, so we're just gonna get that pan hot again. And this is my eight inch cast iron skillet. I love this little pan. To this, I'm gonna add probably about three cups of sliced mushrooms. I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of balsamic glaze and a quarter teaspoon of horseradish. Start cooking these mushrooms down a little bit, get them soft, get some flavor on them. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of white wine. Gonna let these continue to cook down a bit. I'm gonna add another tablespoon of butter now. And you could definitely do this inside on the stove, but if you got the grill going and you got a cast iron pan, why not? I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper here. A couple shakes. All right, these mushrooms are ready. I'm gonna get them inside. And we're gonna taste our flat iron steak. All right, here is our flat iron steak. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of this mushroom sauce on top first. Then I'm gonna cut into it. I know I could do it the other way, but I gotta get that mushroom sauce on here. It just smells really good. Here we go. Let's get some of these mushrooms on here. Some of this nice drizzle. Oh, look at that. And I'm gonna to top this off with some scallions. And there it is. Flat iron steak with mushroom sauce. Let's cut into this. Got my glove on because it's still a little warm here. I'm gonna turn this just a little bit so we can cut right down the center here. Oh, 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 oh man, perfect rare, medium rare for this cut of steak. All right, it's time to taste. All right, I gotta tell you, I had a little taste of the sauce that came off this. I'm talking about the meat, not the mushroom sauce, and it's amazing. This thing marinated for about 18 hours, so there's gonna be flavor in this. Here we go. Wow, that piece of steak basically melted in my mouth. Cooking it to that rare, medium rare for this cut of steak, this flat iron steak, is really the preferred way to go. If you cook it more to well, it may be what you like, but give this a chance if you want tender and tasty. And I got a piece of mushroom here too. Oh my gosh. Wow. It was really good. I gotta say, 
I've cooked a lot of steaks. This is up there in the top three, easily. That overnight marinade, grilling it, and then finishing it indirect so it doesn't overcook on the outside. You get that char, but you don't want that, you don't want it to burn all the way around and then that sort of creeping into the meat. You get this perfectly done steak. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it is just perfectly done, medium rare rare. I'm not weak in the knees, but it's not far from that. One of the other things about a steak like this, and many different cuts of meat, is temperature really rules. Temperature is a determining factor in doneness here. And if you don't have a thermometer that's gonna tell you that, you may be one of those people who can touch a steak or look at it and get the perfect level of doneness. I'm not. I don't know a lot of people who are. A thermometer, whether it's remote or instant read, in my opinion, is vital to getting a steak done this well. So if you can get your hands on a flat iron steak, marinate it overnight, 18 hours is really helpful. Pair it with a good sauce, mushroom sauce maybe, and you're gonna get this.